Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel, and it's that time we're going to be doing a tier list for the rotation. Now, Japan has been playing in our rotation format for quite some time now. I've already done quite a few videos looking at early results and also early deck lists from Japan, but it's now time to do a tier list as to what I think are the best decks right now and kind of what, you know, the general consensus is as to what the best decks are in Japan in the rotation format. They got some of the new cards and they're in the rotation format. We are looking ahead to the future. Not only that, there is the massive Champions League this weekend. In fact, later today is when the Champions League will be happening. And that, of course, will dictate a lot of the meta. There's going to be like over 3,000 players. It's going to be a humongous tournament. And that Champions League is probably going to dictate what the best decks are. Because right now, we're kind of working off of what City League results are doing, which are basically like League Cups in Japan, um, comparatively anyways. And uh, this tier list here was provided by Zapdos TCG. Um, I'll leave a link to his uh, video down below. I think he did a video, obviously, doing this tier list, too. I've added a couple decks to the tier list. I did add Arceus, Gudra, Vulpix, and I also added Sablezard to the tier list. And I'm going to be giving my opinion on where I think each deck is in the rotation format. I could be, you know, a little accurate or inaccurate, but this is just kind of my general idea. I've got a pretty good look as to what the best decks are. I've done a few videos already looking at early decks, and a lot more information has been posted online over the past couple weeks as to what is going on right now in Japan, what decks are winning, and all of that good stuff. I'll leave a link down below also to this tier list if you want to go try it yourself. And I thought I'd give my insight here on the meta heading into the Champions League this weekend. Of course, if you're new here to the second channel, make sure to subscribe down below and leave a like on the video if you go on to enjoy. Let me know what you think of my opinions on this meta is. So we'll start things off here. I do want to start things off with the two Charizard decks. Now, Charizard is the BDIF. I think we can all kind of agree Charizard is the best deck in the format in the rotation, mainly because Charizard still just kind of stays the same. It does lose battle VIP, and we're going to talk about where Charizard stands because there's two versions of Charizard right now. You have Pidgeyzard and you have Bibrolzard. Now, in fact, Bibrolzard is the one that I think is the best right now. So there's been this like online discussion as to why is Bibrolzard all of a sudden a good deck? What, what makes Bibrolzard such a good deck over Pidgeyzard? Isn't Pidgeyzard just a better deck? Well, the idea behind Bibrolzard is one, you're obviously less weak to TM Devolution. But the big thing is aggro Greninja Cologne decks are really popular right now in Japan. So Charizard struggles against canceling Cologne and Greninja, which is a very popular uh, thing right now in Japan's current format, thanks to Prime Catcher. So both Goldengo and Shempao destroy Charizard in the early game. So that's why Pidgeyzard actually is not the best version of Charizard right now. The best version of Charizard is is the Bibrolzard build. And that's just because Bibrolzard doesn't get destroyed by canceling Cologne Greninja as easily because instead of knocking out your Pidgeys and your Charmanders super easily, uh, Greninja can't, you know, bring in the Manaphy and knock out the Bidoof. So essentially, you still get to kind of build up your board a little bit with the Bibrol build. So you, you have a little bit of extra protection against the cross, uh, the, the canceling Cologne uh, Prime Catcher plays. I don't know why I'm saying Cross Switcher. The canceling Cologne Prime Catcher plays are less good in the Bibrolzard deck because they can't knock out your Bidoofs because the Manaphy, you know, has its Bidoofs got built-in ability on Manaphy. They can knock out your Charmanders, which is obviously not ideal, but your Bidoofs are safe, meaning that as long as you can set up your board, you're fine. Another big reason is Pidgeyzard really relies heavily on Rodom V to set up, right? Now, the Rodom V makes it super easy to get a massive hand, and then all of a sudden, it's easy turn to double candy, you know, Charizard Pidgey. However, the Bibblesard build gets to play Buddy Poffin, and really gets to make the best out of Buddy Poffin. Buddy Poffin can find you your Bidoofs, finds you your Charmanders, whereas with Pidgeyzard, Buddy Poffin cannot find you Rotom. So, the, the deck setup is not as, you know, lightning fast as it used to be. Now, I guess, like, Pidgeyzard has always been a good deck with, you know, before the Rodom existed. You know, obviously the Rotom idea was, you know, a thing after Pidgeyzard was already, like, a really good deck. But it is basically fact that Pidgeyzard has a worse time against Greninja Prime Catcher because, you know, you can't reliably, you know, save your Pidgeys and stuff. Whereas with Bidoof, your Bidoofs can't get sniped by Greninja because of their built-in abilities. And that's basically why Bibrolzard is so good right now. The downside of Bibrolzard is it's not Pidgeot. Pidgeot is a very strong card that gets you any card out of your deck every turn. It's a ridiculous ability. It allows you to do some just insane plays. A lot of the time, Pidgeot checkmates your opponent. It's just a very strong card. However, again, the setup in Pidgeyzard is very weak now with, the you know, Rodom being a bit harder to get out. And then also with 
the fact that Greninja Prime Catcher is so popular right now in the format. So it seems uh, Bibzard is the better way to play right now. And I think heading into the Champions League, Bibzard is going to be the best way to play Charizard. But the Pidgeyzard deck definitely is still very good. I mean, Pidgeot is still, like I said, just a very strong card that when set up, it can be very hard to play against because of how powerful Pidgeot's ability is. But Bibzard lets you set up a little bit easier and you don't lose to a Greninja. That's basically why Bibzard is so good. Uh, Dialga Matang, uh, probably C tier. I don't think the deck's bad or anything. Um, we haven't really seen a whole lot of results from it, but I am going to put it in the C tier for now. I do think the deck has potential um, for a good deck, but we'll have to see where the results go because I'm really excited for this one. But right now, I think that it's just kind of hovering in that C tier. I'm not sure if it's a D tier deck by any means. Antivalian is probably C tier too. Maybe it's a bit higher. Um, Antivalian seems okay right now against some of the main archetypes i think that it probably has a good goldengo matchup even though they do play a palkia v-star i mean it's not that bad because goldengo can't do anything against the entei the deck does have the ability to prey on those low hp basics so maybe your shenpao matchup is okay as long as you can take out the friggy baxes early on i'm sure your you know your pidgey and bibzard matchup is i mean that's the problem though entei villian i feel like doesn't really have a great matchup against uh the czar decks because czar just destroys entei but i maybe the deck is okay i don't know the deck seems like it's just kind of a c tier deck i don't I don't know. I could be wrong about this. Anti Valiant might be a better deck than expected. It's also not a very popular deck. I don't think everybody's going to wake up and be like, I got to play Anti Valiant today. You know, it's not a popular enough deck. I, I, it seems like it's okay, though, but I don't know how good it really is against most of the big decks right now. Um, then, of course, we have Arctina. Arctina is an A-tier deck. It's doing pretty good right now in Japan. Arctina does not have a Judge Path, which you might be like, well, how is the deck good then? How is it so good if Judge Path doesn't exist anymore? Well, Judge Path, well, it is a bit of a loss. The deck still has some insane power, and that's because of Maximum Belt. Maximum Belt is very good in Arctina because it lets Arceus V-Star knock out basic EXs with the Maximum Belt, and it also lets Giratina V-Star knock out Charizard in one hit. So you just have insane damage potential. The deck also plays the Iron Leaves EX, which makes your Charizard matchup even better because now you have the ability to use Iron Leaves to kill one of the Charizards. So yeah, the deck does, of course, lose Judge Path, which would have been nice to have. I think the deck still plays Judge anyways. Like, Judge is just still a very good card, and Arctina is definitely one of the better decks to abuse Judge. Sometimes a good Judge can make your opponent fall behind a little bit, and that might give you enough kind of momentum to take control of a match. And Arctina is really good right now in Japan. Arceus, you, you'd be surprised how good Arceus still is, even in the rotation. Um, Great Tusk Mill seems to be like a B-tier deck right now. Um, it is kind of a weird archetype to have be this good, but it is a good deck. It's putting up good results. Of course, you can use a Ancient Supporter, and then you're milling four cards. You have some pretty good bulk with the Great Tusk with the new Cape A-spec card. Um, yeah, you're just a pretty annoying deck to play against. Now, is Great Tusk better than something like Snorlax Control? Like, if I if somebody came up to me and was like, what would you rather play? Would you play Great Tusk or Snorlax I would probably choose Snorlax over Great Tusk. We'll get into that a bit later, obviously, um, where I think Snorlax stands right now. But Great Tusk has been doing pretty good in Japan, and it's actually been putting up some pretty good results right now. So it seems that Great Tusk is actually a pretty legit deck right now in Japan. So right now, I think it's just in the B tier, in the rotation. Future Box. Um, I mean, I think this deck actually is good. I just think we haven't figured out the best 64 future box unfortunately has not been doing as good as it really should be because i think future box has a lot of potential it's got good damage output good attackers uh it just doesn't seem to get there right now and i think mainly it's because it's zard matchup might be a little 50 50 i mean zard is just such a good card that it just kind of beats you uh, i really hate to say it but right now future box hasn't been doing as good as it could be i think it's a c tier deck i don't think future box is unfortunately in the best position right now to be any higher than c tier um i hate to say it but yeah i think it's a c tier deck its results just haven't been as promising as they could be uh, which is a problem i think the deck has potential like i think down the road this deck might go all the way up to a tier but future box currently in japan hasn't been doing the greatest i don't think and it also just hasn't it hasn't had the best results yet it's been kind of a middle of the road decks kind of i just feel like it's like in that same boat as ente and dialga where the deck exists but i just don't know if it's going to be quite there just yet lost zone piles seem to probably be in the b tier maybe hovering around the a tier right now um 
Lost Box is still good. I mean, they still have a lot of really good cards, you know, at their disposal. You know, you got the Roin Moon and the Iron Hands, which are still fantastic partners. You do lose some good cards. Obviously, Dragonite V is gone. Kyogre is a huge one that Lost Zone did lose. But the Lost Zone decks are still very strong because of the amount of options you have. Sableye, you got Cramorant. You can play the Paradox package with the Moon and the Hands. And that has been carrying Lost Box. And I think uh, the Lost Zone deck has actually gone a lot better from what I've seen and heard. The, uh, the Lost Zone variants have been getting a lot better results. And for now, I think Lost Box is in B tier heading into this weekend's Champions League. Giratina, probably C tier. I mean, Giratina is honestly not even that bad of a deck. I think we are underestimating how good the deck is. It kind of reminds me of like Future Box where people are just kind of not playing it right now. The deck still has good things going for it. Like it just because it loses path and doesn't mean that it's like completely dead. Like the deck still has cool plays. It still has like cards like Maximum Belt, which don't get me wrong. Maximum Belt does help against Zard because now you have Star Requiem and Maximum Belt, so you can actually knock out two Charizards in one hit with Giratina, which is actually really, really good. You just don't have Path anymore, which, obviously, part of what made Giratina so good is the comeback potential of Roxanne Path. Giratina does lose Path, which does make it a little bit worse. The deck, obviously, can still very easily lose to the speed base decks. Obviously, something like Roaring Moon could probably still farm you, but for now, I think Giratina's probably in C tier. Like, I don't think the deck is bad or anything. I just don't think that it's gonna quite get there just yet. Guardi's probably C tier too. Um, it's just another deck that I feel like nobody's really playing. I think Guardi's honestly still good. I mean, yeah, your options are a little bit more limited. You don't have access to Zacian and Shining Arcana Gardevoir, and you do lose a ton of setup, but you do have Buddy Poffin, which is a pretty good way to get Rolls in play, um, which is fine. The deck has to rely heavily on getting Curlia um, refinements in play instead of using Mirage Depth to set you up. So the deck's a bit slower than it was before, but the deck still, in my opinion, is insane. Gardevoir still works, in my opinion. I think once people kind of realize Guardi's still not a bad deck, I think the deck will get a lot better. I think for now it's going to be in C tier, though. Part of the thing that also hurts it is obviously the popularity of Greninja Prime Catcher Cologne. Um, next up is Raging Bolt Gardevoir. I'm going to put that in D tier. I don't think that's an archetype, or I don't think it's the best way to play Raging Bolt. I get the idea of the deck. You can use Gardevoir to power Raging Bolt's attack every turn, and you can use other cool attackers like Screamtail and stuff, but I don't believe in Guardi's uh, Raging Bolt. That just kind of seems like you're doing too much. Like, it seems like it's a little bit of an overcooked type deck. Um, Shempow. We can all agree Pow is uh, A tier right now. Pow is doing really good in Japan. It's got the Prime Catcher. It's got the Canceling Cologne combo, which can destroy setup decks. And it also has access to Iron Hands EX, which is extremely deadly. It's funny because Shempow is now the best Iron Hands deck in Japan. Maridon is no longer as good as it used to be. We'll get into that later. And Future Box hasn't, you know, been able to pull off the great results yet. So Shampao is just, by default, the best way to play Iron Hands right now. And uh, yeah, Shampao is a pretty good A-tier deck. The deck is doing really good in Japan right now. It is actually one of the best decks to beat Charizard with. Like, it has a really good Charizard matchup, mainly because you have the Greninja Prime Catcher Cologne, and you have Iron Hands EX, and then, of course, you have easy KOs on Charizard. Charizard might start teching in the Toad's Cruel to help against Shampao, but I still think Shampao can beat Toad's Cruel with Prime Catcher. Like, they bench the one Toad's Cruel, you just... Prime Catcher knock it out, and it's like, all right, GG's. So, yeah, Shempao's really good right now in Japan. I think it's an A-tier deck. I, I wouldn't call it an S-tier deck, but honestly, after this weekend's Champions League, there's a good chance Shempao could become one of the S-tier decks. Like, I actually think the deck just has that good of a potential in the meta right now. Raging Bolt, Sandy Shocks, probably C-tier. Just kind of in there with, like, Gardevoir and stuff. I think the deck has potential. It's got legs. It's just probably not... It's just probably not reaching its full potential. I do like Raging Bolt a lot, though, but I do think it'll struggle against some of the big decks. Like, your Zard matchup might be a little shaky. I actually like the idea of Raging Bolt with alternative energy acceleration engines. I know the Gardevoir build I put in D-tier, uh, but I do like the idea of Raging Bolt with... Um, I do like the idea of Raging Bolt with uh, Mirage Gate even, or playing it with Palkia V-Star. So I think Raging Bolt does have potential. It's like Future Box. Like, I think there is the potential. The potential is there. We just haven't been able to see it, like, co correctly pop off yet. Uh, Roaring Moon, probably B-tier right now. Moon is actually still pretty good because it still has a lot of power. The downside of Moon right now is that it loses a lot of its turn one pop-off. Because of the loss of Battle VIP, you're not as reliably setting up your board as quickly as you used to be. You can't just Battle VIP a bunch of times, fill up your board with, you know, Squawkabilly, Greninja, Double Moon, Morpeko, and Moltres. Now you're, like, relying on Nest Ball, which is a lot worse. So, like, your setup is a little bit slower, um, which is what makes Moon less good. Like, right now, Pretty much in the B tier, in my opinion. 
Goldengo is an A-tier deck. Crazy to say that Goldengo is so good right now. Like, Goldengo is basically just, like, it's not like Shampao, but Goldengo and Shampao are both pretty much in, like, the same category right now of, like, deck does damage with a bunch of energy. Goldengo plays very similarly to Shempow. It's not the same deck, but it does have similar traits. For starters, you have that big energy blow-up attack, and you also have access to Greninja, Cologne Prime Catcher. And I think Goldengo, is it better than Shempow? That's the main question. Is it better than Shempow? Like, if somebody came up to me and was like, all right, Shempow or Goldengo, which deck would you rather play? I probably would still choose, I would probably still pick Shempow, just because of Iron Hands EX. Goldengo does not get to play Iron Hands. I love Goldengo. It is one of my favorite decks right now. And it's going to get better next format, right? Loses Path of Peaks no longer an issue. Buddy Poffin's good for the deck. But I think Shenpao's still, like, the better deck. But Goldengo's, like, just behind it. Like, it's pretty safe to say Shenpao and Goldengo are both A-tier decks. They do similar things. Shenpao's probably the better deck in general because it gets cards like Iron Hands EX. It's a little bit less, like, clunky it is clunky, but it's not like Goldengo. Goldengo can be clunky. It's kind of hard to explain. Goldengo is a little bit more clunkier than Shenpao, even though Shenpao relies on a stage two. We can easily see how Shenpao sets up without a prom half the time anyways, whereas Goldengo is a little bit more clunkier with how it sets up. Not having Battle VIP is a bit of an issue for Goldengo. You're less reliably getting Palkia and Greninja down, whereas Shenpao, you have Buddy Poffin, which is going to get your Fridgies and your b Deuce, which is pretty good. You just don't have battle vip so i don't know i think they're both like pretty good a tier decks i think shampao is slightly better than goldengo because it can use iron hands ex but goldengo is still really good uh snorlax i i mean honestly i think it's a tier like i think snorlax beats most of these decks snorlax beats shampao snorlax obviously beats both bills of charizard um arctina is probably a bad matchup but i mean you can beat arctina if arctina doesn't play that many switching cards you can probably beat arctina um actually arctina is probably a bad matchup but you beat everything else. You got a good Shampao matchup. You got a good Zard matchup. That's probably what makes... What is it? Is it correct to call Snorlax an A-tier deck? Maybe it's a B-tier deck. That feels a little... That doesn't feel right, though. There's no way Snorlax is a, is a B-tier deck, right? Okay, I, I would put Snorlax in B-tier. I actually think it's probably better than Great Tusk. Great Tusk Mill, I think, is good. I think Snorlax is probably better, though. Snorlax just has, like, the best Charizard matchup, I think, still, like... I don't think Snorlax can lose to Charizard right now. Charizard doesn't really respect the Snorlax still. And it probably, yeah, Lax definitely has, like, the best matchup right now against Charizard. Like, I mean, Shempao's good against Zard. Goldengo's good against Zard. Arctina's good against Zard. But, dude, Snorlax just has the best Charizard matchup. I actually think Snorlax is good. I think it's probably good against Shenpao too. Um, yeah, I think Snorlax actually is good. Probably B-tier right now. I think it's better than Great Tusk. Like, if you're going to play any, like, mill control decks, I think Snorlax is better. I just don't think that many people are playing it right now in Japan. Keep in mind, Japan's format is best of one, right? Which does actually impact how good Snorlax usually does. So that's probably why its results haven't been as high. Um, but I, I still don't see Snorlax being any worse than, like, B-tier. It honestly could be A-tier. Like, I think that it legit could be A-tier, but I think it is probably B-tier heading in to the Champions League. Keep in mind, Japan's format is a bit different in terms of how they play. Um, Lax and best of three, probably A-tier. Right now, B-tier, probably really good, though, still. Like, I think it's probably just, like, A-tier for sure. Um, the Roaring Moon Karaidon deck seems like it's B-tier right now. It's got pretty good results. It's not a bad deck. It's doing okay in Japan, but it's probably just in the B-tier at the moment. Um, it's a fun one price deck. It might actually be the best one price deck right now. Um, in the format, um, mainly because it's it's got the really good attack options. You can do a big damage with that one prize Roaring Moon really late in the game. When you're playing so many ancient cards, it's not hard to ramp up damage really quickly with Roaring Moon. So it seems like the deck definitely can get there. Lugia Sinchino is B tier probably. The deck's good. Uh, ironically, Lugia's got good results right now. You would be surprised. Lugia still is in the format despite losing the single strike package. The deck still exists. The deck is still strong. Um, Lugia is also one of the only decks playing Master Ball right now, which is kind of funny. So all you Master Ball enjoyers rejoiced because Lugia is here to stay. Yeah, no, Lugia is doing really good in Japan. It's actually pretty much just a B-tier deck right now. Like, I would say it's, like, the same thing as, like, both Roaring Moon and Lost Box decks. Like, it's just still pretty played, but, you know, it's got it's got decent results. It's not anything crazy. Wouldn't call Lugia A-tier. Probably still has an abysmal Charizard matchup, but I think it's definitely a B-tier deck for sure. Uh, Maridon... I mean, probably C tier. I don't think Maridon is bad. I mean, okay, look, it does lose Flaffy, which is actually pretty bad, right? Losing Flaffy makes the deck a bit worse. Maridon is still very strong, though, with what it can do. It probably just has a horrible Charizard matchup. 
I think if somebody can figure out how to make Maridon good again, Maridon could be good. I think it actually could be better than a C tier. Maybe even could go all the way up to B tier at some point. But I think for now, Maridon is a C tier deck in the Japan format. It's not terrible by any means, but we just haven't figured out the best way to play it. It's got the potential to be higher than C tier, kind of like Future Box and Lost Tina. Like, if the potential is still there, in my opinion. You get Iron Hands. You can donk your opponent. Turn one Maridon is still very deadly. You still have most of your attackers, like Raichu and Raikou. In Iron Hands, but, yeah, you're just, uh, you lose Flaffy, which scares a lot of people off. Uh, Bayonet, probably C tier. Bayonet's really cool. I think this is a deck that if somebody can crack the code on it, could get a lot better for sure. Um, Torterra, probably C tier. Probably okay against Charizard, maybe. Uh, I'm very generous to Torterra. I'm putting Guardi Raging Bolt as the only D tier deck for the record, but, um, uh, I think Torterra's, like, I'm gonna give it more credit than I probably should it's probably like worse than we expect but i want oterra to be good so i'm gonna put that in the c tier because i want the deck to be good bro i just want it to be good there's no like i want it to be good torterra is like matchup spreads okay i mean you do have a lot of attackers like you can play the single price torterra you get grottle we did look at a list earlier which had access to the toad's cruels which i think are really good in the deck toad school makes your shampoo matchup slightly better and your goldengo matchup which goldengo is probably tough because you don't do a lot of damage to it Arc Gudra Vulpix. And this deck actually seems to be decent right now. Um, I say it seems to be decent. I slap it in the C tier. It's not a popular enough deck, but it is still a good arc pile. Arc Goob Picks and Arc Tina are like the two main Arceus V Star decks right now in Japan that are doing well. And for good reason, because Arc Goob Vulpix has a lot of power. It's got a lot of annoying attacks with Gudra and Vulpix, both being very hard to deal with. Gudra can now use the uh, Giant Cape. A spec card, I think, and you can also play Mist Energy, so you don't just automatically lose to um, Roin Moon and stuff. So, yeah, Arku Picks actually is decent right now in Japan. It's not popular enough or got the best results, but it's a decent C tier deck. Like, it's there, it exists, it's good. And then finally, Sablezard. Um, maybe C tier, maybe a little bit higher, maybe something like B tier is a bit more generous for this deck, but Sablezard is definitely just kind of in the middle right now. It's like it's not a terrible deck. Um, it hasn't just been, like, it's not the most popular version of Lost Box. But Sable's Art is another deck that definitely could go up to B tier after the Champions League. This is just heading into the Champions League. Now, I think post-Champions League, this tier list is going to look a little bit more different. Like, I think there's a real chance the S tier could have two decks. I think there could be some major shifts after the Champions League. This is currently, in my opinion, the meta heading into Champions League. I think the best decks are Charizard variants, Arctina, Shampao, and Palkia, Goldango. The B tier, pretty solid decks. They can win, they can do well, but they're just not popular enough or worth really being like, oh, I'm going to tech for this deck. Whereas the, the C tier are all just like, not fringe decks, but decks that you wouldn't expect to see. Like, they're just not going to be as popular as the decks above it. You know what I mean? Like, they're just not as popular as the B tier decks. But they're all not bad. I think Raikou Guardi is just, I don't think that deck is good at all. But um, I do think this is my current opinion right now on the tier list heading into this weekend's Champions League. I might be doing a watch party for the Champions League over on my Twitch and YouTube, so uh, definitely be hyped for that if I do decide to do that. Um, but yeah, that'll be it for the video. I'll leave a link down below once again to the tier list if you want to go try it yourself. I'll leave a link to Zapdos's video if you want to go watch his opinion on the tier list too. Maybe get a couple of content creators' opinions on the tier list. Let me know what you think of it. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens at the uh, Champions League in Japan this weekend. We'll see where the meta heads, what decks are going to be good, what deck wins, how the meta shifts. And yeah, that'll be for me. Hope you enjoyed. Catch you later. Bye-bye.